Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be making the weakest out of the three explosives known as 1-1-Dinitramino-5-5 Bitrazole. Thank you so much to my 10 plus dollar patrons for helping make all this possible. Please never ever 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 try anything you see that I do at home because it is super dangerous, super expensive, and super difficult. So please never try this. Ever. Okay, so now that we're going to begin our synthesis, we're going to need three reagents, methyl carbazate, glyoxol, and a little bit of glacial acetic acid. Now the distillation that I've set up right here, I didn't have any glacial acetic acid, so I'm making some as I speak. A lab partner came. Hello? Okay, so here it is. Here's the chemical that will essentially make everything for us. Now, like I said earlier, it costs $80 for 25 grams, so I'm gonna have to be very wary of how much I use, and I cannot fail these reactions, so let's begin. So to begin the initial reaction, we're gonna need 4.5 grams of methyl carbazate, or at least that's what this, uh, that's the uh, scale that I'm doing it at. So I'm just gonna drop in a stir bar because we're gonna need that. Okay, so here it is. Here's the uh, methyl carbazate. You are looking at a lot of money right down there. That's only 4.5 grams. So now we're gonna dissolve this up in 36 milliliters of methanol. So one great thing I like about this specific reaction is that it doesn't have to be anhydrous because we're gonna be adding you know, a solution with water in it later. But you know, obviously have your methanol as pure as possible. Also, uh, before we do anything, we have to make sure that the methyl carbazate is completely dissolved. And another great thing that I like about this is that uh, it's done at room temperature, so we don't have to worry about cooling and heating and stuff. So we're going to add 3.45 grams of my 40% solution of glyoxal, which I have right here. And that's equivalent to like 1.4 grams, I think, of the actual glyoxal. But the solution, we need 3.45. And we're going to dissolve this aqueous solution. Not really dissolve, but we're going to mix it with 12 milliliters of methanol. So here I have the weighed out 3.45 grams of glyoxal, the solution, and I'm going to add 12 mil. Now I'm gonna add 12 milliliters of methanol. And we're just gonna swirl that around to get it all mixed up. So now that everything's ready, I just need to add my glyoxal solution to the uh, methanol solution of the methyl carbazate. And once those are added and stirred, I'm just gonna add in two drops of glacial acetic acid as the catalyst to actually get this reaction to proceed. Okay, so now I'm just going to add the uh, glyoxal solution in, and then the two drops of glacial acetic acid. Only after about a minute after the uh, original addition, a precipitate formed. Okay, so the reaction actually worked. I am very happy right now. So now I'm just going to uh, vacuum filter this, because it's been stirring for around an hour now. And that's all I really need to do. So I'm just going to vacuum filter this and then get my product. So we ended up with 3.93 grams of this product right here. And that is enough to move on to the next step. For a second step, we're going to need three things. We're going to need the product that we just made, 300 milliliters of dimethylformamide and n So I just drop in a stir bar. Then I'm just going to pour in the uh, 300 milliliters of dimethylformamide. And once that's all in, I'm going to turn on stirring and uh, put in our product that we just made. So once that's all suspended, then we're gonna weigh out 20 grams of n and from there we're just gonna dump it all in at once. And this is all done at room temperature. So now we're gonna let it stir for a period of 24 hours at room temperature. Three hours in and the solution completely cleared up and turned yellow. I started to think that it wouldn't work. I was getting a little scared because I want a product that's the precipitate and it all just redissolved. However, I came back a few hours later, and the solution started to become cloudy, and it just got cloudier and cloudier from there, so it ended up working. This is what the reaction looked like after 24 hours, and uh, it was done, so I went to go filter it. Okay, so here is our chlorinated product, and we don't want the chlorinated product. The only reason why we did this was so we could stick an azide on it. So now we're going to add sodium azide for our uh, third step. DMF has a very low vapor pressure, which is very annoying because I couldn't dry it. So after painfully scraping it all off and sticking it into a 50 milliliter beaker, I suspend it in 10 milliliters of more DMF. And this is going to be a very, very like concentrated suspension. So it's going to be a little thick. 
Also, we're going to have to cool this solution down, so I'm going to stick it in an ice bath while I go weigh out my sodium azide. We need it to be between 0 and 5 degrees Celsius. So we're going to weigh out 0.65 grams or 650 milligrams of sodium azide. That's all we're going to need. And once it's down to temperature, which it should be, I'm just going to pour it in. There ends up being some, like, gas evolution, it looks like, because the solution actually starts to bubble up toward the end. Okay, so now that this is, uh, God, that is so annoying. Now that this is taking on more of a uh, tan color, I guess, now I'm going to let it stir for another 24 hours. Also, I took it out of the ice bath because we only needed that for the first minute or two, just while it initially reacted. So this is what it looks like after 24 hours, and it is much more liquidy, which hopefully means that the reaction's working. So to get our product, we need to pour in 10 milliliters of ice-cold water, and that's going to dissolve all of the uh, impurities that we don't want, but uh, precipitate out the rest of our product that we're actually going for. Now this reaction is a little problematic because it only has like a maximum 38% yield, but I hope that uh, we can, you know, get past that and actually get a decent amount of product. So, after filtering it, when it touched the sunlight, it actually turned pinkish red, which means that it probably decomposes to UV radiation, so I definitely don't want that happening. So after this, I quickly just put it in a vacuum desiccator to dry it out a little bit, and uh, keep it out of the sunlight. For the last step of the reaction, we need to cyclize this compound. So we're going to need ethereal HCl, and I don't have any, obviously, so I'm going to have to make some. So I just stick some ether into uh, an ice bath, and I bubble hydrochloric acid through it, and I just produce it with a sulfuric acid and sodium chloride, and I put it through a drying trap so that everything stays dry. I can tell that the ether is saturated when the bubbles no longer are dissolving and they just keep on going through like that. So we're just going to use 50 milliliters of this for the next part. Also, this stuff fumes a lot, so I have to be very careful. Once the ethereal HCl is cooled to zero Celsius, I'm just going to pour all of my product in at once. Now I'm just going to seal the flask, cover it in aluminum foil, and uh, let it stir for three days at room temperature. Yes, you heard me right. This reaction is three days long. I also put the uh, ethereal HCl solution inside of a plastic bag because I didn't want the ethereal HCl vapors to go everywhere. Yeah, the aluminum foil is pretty uh, eaten. Can't really see it, but hydrochloric acid definitely got to it. Uh, now the cat clamp, the metal one. Dude, I'm I'm sorry. All right, I'll, I think I'll give you a little uh, baking soda bath just because I feel bad for you. Good job. I'm proud of you. Now that everything's situated, I just dry my product, and we are ready for the last step. So in this step, I'm supposed to extract it with methanol, because there's obviously going to be impurities. However, it turns out, I don't really get much product at all. And that's because I don't think I really cyclized it, or maybe the sodium azide step didn't work too well. I'm not really too sure. This is where I called it quits and gave up on this project, because it wasn't really worth the hassle of wasting more of my methyl carbazate or wasting more of my precious supplies. So yeah, that was kind of a little uh, disappointing end to this synthesis. However, it was actually fun, and uh, I might try it again, although I highly doubt it because the other energetics are more powerful anyways. This one was just kind of a uh, proof of concept one. I hope you at least enjoyed my attempt.